Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock the book How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big. This book gives a complete set of methods for ordinary people to turn the tables successfully. Its core philosophy is, successful people do not hope to succeed, they decide to pursue success, and in order to truly succeed, they need a system. This book provides a new set of secrets to become successful. The author of this book, Scott Adams, is the creator of the well-known comic series Dilbert. You have probably heard of or read the Dilbert comics, which have appeared in 1,550 newspapers all over the world. Adams is also the author of books such as, The Dilbert Principle, God's Debris and Loser Think. We can see that Adams' achievements are pretty enviable, but you may not have thought that Adams used to be an ordinary man. Since the time he was a child, he has been frail and sickly. He also has learning disabilities, went to a second-tier university, and failed in most of his work experience. So how did he become a well-known comic creator, best-selling author, and even the founder of a food company? In the bookie tools of Titans, we introduced the system on which he relied for success. In this bookie, we will have a comprehensive understanding of his success method in two parts. Part 1. Mentally prepare for success. Part 2. Prepare a method for success. Part 1. Mentally prepare for success. When it comes to success, we often say that there is a massive gap between thoughts and actions. So, what is hidden in this gap? This book tells you that what is hidden is a decision. Only when you make a decision, can your ideas become a reality. Adams says that it is crucial to distinguish between hope and decision. Hope is just an idea. Hope comes from the heart and can only stay in the heart. On the other hand, a decision is a prerequisite for action. Only when you are determined to succeed will you take action. This is a crucial difference. Adams has suffered from many strange diseases, such as focal dystonia, a condition that causes his pinky finger to spasm and spasmodic dysphonia in his throat, which almost made him lose his voice. When he was still in the university, Adams got a disease called mononucleosis. His throat was so swollen that he could not swallow. The condition scared the school nurses and doctors so much that they advised him to leave school for treatment. But Adams instead decided to stay in school. Take note that he decided to stay in school. After making this decision, Adams laid in the hospital bed, pushing himself to study hard. By the time he was discharged from the hospital, his progress in his studies had been faster than that of his classmates for more than a month, and his grades had also improved. Adams emphasized that he did not merely want to stay in school when he heard the doctor's advice. Instead, he decided to stay in school. This was the essential difference. Every time Adams had to make a difficult decision, he would make an affirmation, which sent a self-suggestion of success in his heart. For example, in the face of the possibility of losing his voice, he would say to himself, I, Scott, have to speak perfectly. To realize his comic dream, he would say to himself, I, Scott Adams, will be a famous cartoonist. When these wishes finally realized, Adams would inevitably have more trust in these affirmations. What making affirmations does is that they harness the effect of deciding to succeed, in order to take the most critical first step in decision making. Once you decide to pursue success, the second thing you need to prepare is to make sure that you can afford the corresponding price. There is a price for everything, and the prices for pursuing success are likely to be very high. They include, but are not limited to, sacrificing your private life, immersing yourself in studying and enrolling in college, choosing a very dull but lucrative profession, postponing marriage and having children, spending less time with family, and taking the risk of being in straitened circumstances or even bankruptcy and divorce. In Adam's case, deciding to succeed means spending a lot of energy researching his strange diseases and embarking on a long journey of seeking medical advice and treatment, otherwise, he wouldn't have extra energy to cope with other difficulties. Many people keep their dreams of success in their heads without taking any action, as they feel like the price to pay is too high. However, only when they acknowledge the price and are willing to pay it, will they be determined to take action and step on the path to success. You may wonder, if I wish to pursue success, and the price of success is really high, what should I do? Adam said that you should build a system. A correct system can make you substantially more efficient when paying the price. In other words, the system lowers the price of success to an acceptable degree so that you can have more chances of succeeding. Well, now that you have 